Right, and with that, I'm going to open a work session on House Bill 4122. And do you want to give us a quick update on that? Thank you, Madam Chair, members of the committee. House Bill 4122 allows local government to inhibit or prevent production or use of seed or seed products for purpose of protecting seed or seed products that are not genetically engineered from adverse impacts of genetically engineered seed or products. The proposed Dash 3 amendments replace the measure with labeling requirements for genetically engineered fish destined for human consumption and direct the State Department of Agriculture to adopt rules that establishes effective dates. Uh, the Dash 3 amendments also have a minimal fiscal and minimal revenue impact. Representative did you want to? Um, you know, Madam Chair, I, I'd like uh, to request the, the uh, written testimony from Don Tipping, who actually testified uh, here on the committee day but did not leave his written testimony and submitted yesterday, I believe, be entered into the public record. I think we can do that during the work session. Okay, great. And since we didn't really have much opportunity to ask questions, this was the bill that had a lot of public testimony. Do you, do colleagues, do you have any questions that you want to direct to Representative Holby as the sponsor of the bill, both on the underlying bill or on the amendment? Representative, I, I do. Um, thank you, thank you, Chair Fagan. Um, so, Representative Holby, on on the uh, the salmon amendment, I think that's the Dash Three amendment. Is that right? That's correct. So um, I, I don't understand the need for that because right now, as I understand the situation is, is that the feds have approved GE salmon, but have kind of put that on, um, on hold, pending the federal government coming up with a with a labeling requirements on that. So it, I, I can't imagine. Um, so what that amendment does is has has state required label requirements, whatever, um, and. Um, the, either the federal ones are going to preempt the state ones or render the state ones unnecessary. So wh why is this amendment necessary? Uh, uh, this uh, amendment is uh, to join with uh, the state of Alaska and many uh, communities to try to put pressure on the federal government to move forward with a labeling requirement and to put on the books that uh, the state of Oregon supports labeling of the genetically engineered fish. So, um, so, uh, so I'm not misunderstanding then that the federal government is is going to have a labeling requirement, right? I mean that that's what they that's why they put it on hold, right? Well, uh, I don't know that we can uh, be sure that that will happen. Uh, the uh, the bill that uh, is requesting the labeling is an appropriations bill, which uh, my contact with our federal delegation will expire. And it may be that uh, that doesn't happen uh, readily. You are correct. If the federal, uh, the legal opinion I got, if the federal government does adopt uh, a, uh, a labeling requirement that is accepted and, and uh, is offers the consumer uh, the information they need to identify that as genetically engineered fish, it would uh, most probably preempt uh, or Oregon's labeling law at that time. Thank you. And, uh, Greg, I am not an attorney. I'm just, you know, just play one in the legislature. Yeah, I just I have a right to play one here. And, and it seems like it's a little bit more politics than the law uh, on on that issue. The way you explain it, so. And there well, has, federal law can change yeah. as well, you know, yeah. on on this issue. Yeah. So as can state laws. So as we, can we state laws. Come back later. And actually, there's been a. It's kind of relevant there, Mr. Peden. Do you want to come up? The Pacific Seafood at least has made, reached an agreement with Representative Holby about some language that will be inserted on the Senate side. So if you want to speak to that, Greg. Uh, good afternoon, uh, Madam Chair, members of the committee. Greg Peden here on behalf of Pacific Seafood. Um, uh, I want to remind the, the committee of one important fact as it relates to uh, the genetically modified salmon, and that is, is that uh, prior to the approval this fall, this past fall of the fish from the FDA. FDA had studied this issue for 25 years. Uh, I, I don't know, but I doubt that any other food product has gone through such a lengthy and rigorous approval process from the FDA before uh, reaching uh, approval. That's a very important uh, piece of this overall puzzle uh, uh, to uh, the commercial fishing industry. Um, 
And uh, because of that, uh, what we have asked uh, Representative Holney to consider was some language uh, that we uh, intend to insert on the Senate side, uh, stating that the FDA has uh, determined that uh, genetically altered or engineered salmon are safe for human consumption. That's a very important part of the puzzle. So I don't have specific language uh, today, but to that effect, as I've just first described, and I think we've we've reached that uh, uh, that part of it. And with that, uh, we're uh, we're satisfied with the bill. All right. Thank you. Yeah. Great. And I, and I might add, I have, I have also talked uh, with uh, Katie Fast from the Oregonians from Food and Shelter, and we're noodling on on some language, uh, perhaps to consider in the in the Senate as well. Okay. Good to know. Representative Thurk. Thank you, Chair Fagan. And either of you can answer this. Why? Why in the Senate? The reason I ask is we've already discovered oftentimes they think differently than the House. <laughs> And um, I guess that's what happens when you're the lower chamber. But body of the people. Yes. <laughs> so, but uh, why not, um, as we've been doing all day, or I mean, we did all day yesterday, send it to rules and get those amendments on this side, as opposed to sending it over there, hoping that it'll be amended with this. It, oh, I can answer that. I mean, it's not a matter of, of necessarily hoping. It's I mean, agreement between the bill's chief sponsor and you know, a organization that was opposing the bill to have that language and they'll, the reality was just mostly a matter of time. I think we came up with this agreement like outside of the floor session today. There just wasn't time to get the language drafted and the, the you know, fizz res statement on it in order to move the bill today because today is the last day and rules is a good place for a lot of bills in this instance because there's already agreement. It's easier just to send it over to the Senate and let it be working or their rules will often be so they'll often be put to rules if they're, we're close to an agreement, but it's not quite there. Here we have an agreement, and so it makes sense to send it over to the Senate and let that be over there, and then we'll obviously have to vote to concur on whatever changes the Senate makes. So, okay. uh, Representative Nierman and then Representative McLean. Okay. Uh, so I want to just talk a little bit about the, uh, the underlying bill. So um, I, uh, I'm not really an ag person. I kind of I grew up in... Uh, Beaverton, so um, I, uh, I, but I kind of live in an ag district, and I'm trying my hardest to to be an ag person. So I, I try to hang out with farmers and ag people as much as I can. One one of the things that um, impresses me about um, uh, for the farming community, at least where I talk to them in the Willamette Valley, is that uh, they solve their problems by uh, talking to each other, or, or I should say, they try to solve their problems by by talking to each other and working with each other, and. Um, that to me, that that's so impressive to me, and so superior to um, the idea of uh, the the government coming in and solving it, or even putting something on a ballot and saying this 51 percent of the people get to clobber this 49 percent of the people. And um, I just, I just, I feel bad that uh, if that system, that system of trust that's grown up you know, over, over the many, many, many decades, at least in the Willamette Valley, would be, uh, you know, damaged or put aside, uh, you know, in favor of a system that uh, kind of favored uh, just a, a more bureaucratic solution. So um, however this turns out, if that's the way it turns out, uh, I'm kind of saddened by that. So I'll, I'll just leave that as a comment. Do you want to know that it replaces the... Yeah, Madam Chair, are, are we under a motion on the dash three, or, or is we have this not had a motion yet? Oh We're well, still... you know, I, I uh, I'll just respond if I could to Rep, uh, Representative Nierman. I I agree. I, I wish things could be worked out, but sometimes uh, uh, I think that's part of the frustration of the the un issue on on the underlying bill is that there it really isn't a system to address. Uh, this contamination uh, problem and uh, the mediation doesn't necessarily replace the economic loss uh, to the farmers who suffer that contamination. And so, I th and the, the frustration I think from those that group of farmers is that uh, since the passage of uh, Senate Bill 863 in the 2013 special session, uh, the Oregon Department of Agriculture has not solved that issue, and the task force made no recommendations. And so I, I think that issue has yet to be solved, and uh, I'm hoping that uh, in, in the future it will get solved. And um, I think they uh, presented this issue, and uh, you know, I, I, I think they have a, a, a legitimate issue that needs to be solved and I hope either the Department of Agriculture solves it or 
or the legislature will solve it in the future. Uh, and that, and that's, you know, my, I guess my point on that, so. Representative McLean. Well, my, uh, my comments are also on the underlying bill, and one of the comments that was made to me yesterday are, are you going to vote for the underlying bill and support farmers? And that, I want to talk about that comment because I really, I really believe that we had a room full of farmers and growers and agricultural folks. And as a fifth generation Oregonian, I have watched crops be added to our, you know, to our base line of crops to over 200 crops. And so I really agree with Representative Nearman that I'm hoping that we can find a pathway that will allow all farmers and all agricultural growers and all crops to coexist in the state of Oregon. Now, I agree with Representative Hovey, Hovey that if we can't find that pathway, if the farming and agricultural industry cannot help us find that pathway, well then we need to look to others to try and figure out how to help, again, growers in the state of Oregon. But it's it's one of those situations, again, where I think that, as Representative Nierman said, let's go for cooperation and let's go for continuing to look for that pathway before, and let's not preempt that possible pathway. And there's one other clue that wasn't mentioned so far, and that is I did not have the counties running in, jumping up and down, and saying they thought this was a local issue at this point. I had one or two county representatives and or residents who said that to me. But again, I think you need to get your counties involved in this conversation and in the solution pathway because I think it's really important to understand that those folks may not be asking to take on that responsibility. And so if they're unwilling, that also doesn't mean necessarily a solution that's going to be apparent or fair or successful in any way. So I hope the dialogue will continue, and I hope that as much as you want to be on your farms and continuing not to come into the capital, that at least you can send people to report back that you're doing well. Representative Stark. Thank you, Chair Fagan. Um, and uh, Representative McLean, uh, I represent two counties who have been very, very involved on the underlying bill and have had a lot Those to say about that. Those were the two that. that came in. Yes. They were um, my people from home. And so, however, I just want to clarify and make sure we're all understanding that the intent here in a moment is, or we're, we're expecting a motion on the dash threes, which would remove the underlying and deal specifically with the fish labeling. That's, that's where we're headed. Okay, so I would, so. Okay. Not that we can, and I highly expect that we will continue having conversations related to the underlying bill, but um, I think that ship has somewhat sailed today. <laughs> you want to just do a motion? Uh, after a comment? Perhaps. Okay, please. Um, yeah, I, I recognize uh, Representative McLean's statement, but I, I do want to note that the underlying bill didn't require counties to take on this responsibility. It just gave them, you know, under our home rule charter in the state of Oregon, the ability to do that. Um, so it was a matter of, of the potential local control to step in, you know, if they saw in their area where their predominant industry was being impacted by the lack of action by the state, they they could do that. Yes. And so, just for clarity, and uh, Madam Chair, I'd move the adoption of the Dash Three Amendment to HB Forty One Twenty Two. Representative Holvey has moved to adopt the Dash Three Amendment dated February eighth of sixteen to House Bill Forty One Twenty Two. Is there any further discussion? I would just want to note that there was a lot of compelling testimony on Tuesday on the underlying, you know, as we're, we're now moving to replace the underlying bill with the amendment. So I just want to make a note that, you know, I hope that we do, at least by considering this bill and the testimony that we heard on both sides, do pressure the Department of Ag to, and the, and the task force to come up with a solution because the most, of all the testimony we heard, the most compelling thing to me was the woman who talked about this particular strain of bean that came in the country in like the hem of a woman's skirt. And the problem is if we, you know, there is some urgency to this issue and I hope the Department of Ag will hear us say there's urgency to this because there are certain things that can never be replaced. If that bean genre goes away, 
even if the Department of Ag decides to act two years from now, there are certain things that could never come back again. And so there is an urgency to this, and there are certain things that will be a permanent and ongoing harm that will never be able to be replaced. Um, and I thought that, that that was at least to me the most moving example of something that really is at stake here. Um, and so I, I hope that the Department of Agriculture will hear us and will uh, will act with some urgency to make sure that this the intent of the grand bargain bill is carried out and that there is a procedure by which uh, these farmers can have some recourse in that urgent situation where a particular strand of bean is at risk of becoming extinct. So with that, that's my only comment. Any further discussion on replacing the measure with the Dash 3 amendment? Okay, is there any objection? Okay, will the clerk please call the roll? and I felt a little slighted by <laughs> Representative Holvey and his brash nature on this committee to take over my responsibilities. Perhaps the Department of Ag will set up a mediation <laughs> opportunity for legislators who hurt each other's feelings. If, if the Department it of Ag is listening work. right now. <laughs> <laughs> because the chair asked me for the motion. <laughs> With that objection now formally on the record for all Oregonians to hear, Madam Chair, I move House Bill 4,122 as amended to the floor with a due pass recommendation. Representative Rayfield moves House Bill 4122 as amended to the floor with a due pass recommendation. Is there any discussion? Yes. So, Madam Chair, just wanted to throw my stance out there. I, your response with the agreement and sending it over to the Senate, uh, you know, that's quite logical. I personally would rather see those amendments on this side. Uh, so I'm going to be a no vote today if those amendments are made and comes, you know, back for a, back over here for, now I forget the term. Concurrence. Concurrence, Concurrence thank you. Then I will definitely reconsider that vote, but I'm going to be a no at this point. Further discussion? Okay, seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? Representative Colby? Aye. Representative Holvey would like to carry that bill. For the sake of its passage, do you want anybody else to carry it? Possibly. <laughs> 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 All right, with that, I Representative just... Holvey's going to roll the dice. <laughs> He's going to carry the bill. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we're having too much fun today. Okay, with that, I'm going to close the work session on House Bill 4122 and open a work session on House Bill 4058. And you will remind us what that bill is. Thank you, Madam Chair. Members of the committee, House Bill 4058 permits a corporation with shares that are registered under Oregon or federal securities law to reject the vote, consent, waiver, or proxy authorization if shareholder has not complied with public disclosure requirements of Oregon or federal securities law, declares an emergency, and is effective on passage. We have proposed dash two amendments that establish that the corporation must reject actions of all shareholders not in compliance with disclosure requirements and must accept actions once shareholders become compliant. Uh, let's see. No fiscal impact, no revenue impact on the Dash 2 amendments. All right. Thank you. Bill, do you want to go ahead and come up? Um, just so, that, so colleagues, um, if you recall, there was an attorney, uh, not a lobbyist, but an attorney from the Oregon State Bar who expressed some concerns kind of just from the Bar's securities group. And so I thought that and, uh, Mr. Cross did not have an opportunity to respond to those comments, again, because of time on Tuesday. So I just thought I would give you an opportunity if you wanted, or colleagues, if you have questions based on the testimony of the Oregon State Bar, um, so I would give you an opportunity. Madam Chair, committee members, uh, thank you for the opportunity. The uh, Many of the defenses that the oh, attorney... Oh, state your name. Oh. There would be that. Rookie mistake, Bill. <laughs> Rookie mistake. 
Bill Cross, and I'm here today on behalf of the Willamette Valley Vineyards. And the um, defenses that the attorney raised are um, more appropriate for larger companies, larger publicly held companies that have either won lots of dollars for attorney fees to build in some of those defenses, and or two, where they have many shareholders who are represented by investment bankers, that type of thing. So when they're voting in proxies, they've got blocks of votes that can pass bylaw changes that he alluded to. For smaller publicly held companies, it's difficult uh, just to get a quorum, uh, you know, through the proxy votes because many of them don't have, you know, investment bankers or investment analysts or um, brokers that are representing them. They're filling out their proxies. So for some of the smaller publicly held companies, all the bill would do would be another possible defense, provide another option. It's not mandated. We would I'd be happy to answer questions, but we'd appreciate your support. All right, any questions for Mr. Cross? I don't think anybody understands this bill. <laughs> There's a lot of uh, <laughs> blank faces, but you guys have done a good job of explaining it. Representative Hack wasn't able to be here today. It is a complicated topic. I did appreciate the Oregon State Bar weighing in, um, and I imagine c c conversation will continue on the Senate side, but um, I appreciate your testimony. So is there no questions for Bill? Oh, Any further comments? Yeah. One further one, Madam Chair. Um, we appreciated the feedback that we had received from the bar, you know, bef before the hearing, uh, because the bill had been forwarded to them, and hence the, the dash to amendments, right. which do help clarify and specify how those bylaws might come into play if a company were to, to uh, exercise that option. So we do appreciate their input um, and would definitely recommend that the dash two amendments be adopted if the bill is to move forward. All right. Thank you. Representative Holvey. Uh, Madam Chair, did we hear from uh, the members of the State Bar on the amendments? or I mean, they suggested them or they're okay with them? I haven't heard from anybody. I know there's somebody. Did you, not the securities expert in the back, though. I'm not, I'm not the securities expert. Right. She's with the bar. Oh, go ahead. You, you have to come up if you're going to make any comments. Sorry. Sorry. That would be a fun way to do committee, though. Just have like a passing mic. <laughs> that would be fun. Just people to stay in their seats. Go ahead. Uh, Amy Zubko, Oregon State Bar. The amendments were shared with the securities regulations. I was actually, um, Chris Hall is a member of the business law section um, prior to the hearing, and so he has seen them. As for I can't speak for the section or Mr. Hall, who is here um, on his own and not representing the bar officially when he uh, attended the hearing on earlier this week. So, I, Madam Chair, yeah. so I assume if he's seen him, if he had a problem with him, he would uh, be here. So, it's an assumption, I guess, but so. Any further comments or questions? Yes, Representative McLean. Well, as I listened to the lawyer the last time from the bar, and I can't remember his name. But that was Chris Hall. Chris That's Hall, Chris yeah. Hall. Okay. And so um, I felt, as was described by uh, Mr. Cross today, that he was talking about a different, you know, segment of the population of businesses. And uh, so I feel very comfortable with what I saw in the way of amendments and what, what we're trying to achieve for a particular type of public company. So I, I think it's important that if there are problems, that we'll have to address them in the future. Any further comments or questions? Okay, thank you guys very much. All right, with that, uh, I will entertain a motion on the dash two. Sorry. Chair Fagan, I uh, move to adopt the dash two amendments dated 2 10 16. House Bill 4058. I have I have amendments dated 2816 on mine. Oh, I'm sorry. 2816. Do you need to withdraw his previous motion? No, it's okay. Clarification. Clarification. You go ahead and you want to make a clarification, Representative? Yeah, for 
purpose of clarification, I move to adopt the dash two amendments dated to 816 on House Bill 4058. Thank you. Representative Bueller moves to adopt the dash two amendments dated to 816. Is there any discussion on the dash twos? I would just say thank you to Representative Hack and to uh, Wellhammer Valley Vineyards for working at least to, you know, to try and clarify, to address some of the concerns that were brought forward. So with, if there are no further discussions on the Dash 2, uh, we're I don't have any discussion on the Dash 2. Okay. Sorry. Is there any objection? Okay, seeing none, the amendments are adopted, and I'll entertain a motion the underlying bill as amended. Chair Fagan, I move uh, House Bill 4058 as amended to the floor with a due pass recommendation. Representative Bueller has moved House Bill 4058 as amended to the floor with a due pass recommendation. Is there any discussion? Representative Holby. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I will be supporting uh, uh, this measure, but out of uh, some caution, I'm going to declare a potential conflict of interest because I am a shareholder uh, of corporations in Oregon that could be impacted by this bill and may impact my loss or profit from uh, that those uh, investments. Thank you. Do you need to submit that in writing to the clerk? Okay. Thank you very much. Further discussion? Okay, seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? Representative Hack would like to carry that bill, so we'll assign her as the carrier. All right.